Heavenly Father, we're very grateful for the opportunity of coming together in your presence, knowing that you are present to us and we are present to you on the grounds that the bride now has the headship and leadership of God Almighty himself, who is about to <coughs> completely restore a people even to the point of glorification, which they had not quite attained to in the garden, but will now attain at this moment, coming upon the earth. And we know, Lord, that this is true. We stand awed in your presence, and we know, Lord, that it's wonderful to be in your presence and hear from you to know we have a vindicated word which is truly authoritative. You being the authority, for you wrote it with the power to bring it to pass, and we're grateful for that. We just ask you to further reveal your wonderful word to us, and may it be what we desire it to be, which is meat and drink to our souls and the transformer and transfigure of our bodies. Coming right to that day, Lord, when the dead, as it were, come out of the earth. We know that's more or less a figure of speech, but realize, Lord, that they'll be brought back here and they shall take on forms of glorification like unto yours and all. Then we'll go to the wedding supper of the Lamb, and that'll be a marvelous time. And we know, Lord, that this is true because it has been proven to be true. And may we be a part of it and, Lord, press into it and love it and realize it as never before. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Now we're on to number 12 here in the second message of the uh, spoken word is original seed. And in the past several discourses or discussions on this message, we have seen that as Eve had a choice to receive the Word of God as her ultimate or to receive the changed Word of God as her ultimate. So did the church under Paul that started out as a virgin of the Word in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Now we're going to go there to show you that this is exactly the truth and what Brother Branham was talking about. He said before Adam could get to Eve, <clears throat> she had already come from behind the Word of God, been thoroughly beguiled, seduced. And what did she bring forth? She brought forth serpent seed. Now, what should she have brought forth? She should not have brought forth serpent seed. She brought forth death instead of life. She was to have, she was, was to have brought forth life. So the whole thing was completely messed up uh, by the changing of the Word. <clears throat> so... <clears throat> Paul, Brother Branham quotes this many times. The second verse, For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. Now remember the law of jealousy is that if the husband suspects the wife of fooling around on him, having cohabitation, cohabiting with another person, uh, he, he doesn't know that she has, but he gets very suspicious. And then she has to be brought into the temple and various processes have been gone, have to be gone through. And if she has been then uh, with another man and she might not even be pregnant, there's a terrible condition of the swelling of the belly, the rotting of the bones, and all of those things that take place. And you will notice right today under the, uh, if a person is, uh, Dying of malnutrition, actually starving. The stomach is distended. You can see the bones coming through in the flesh. And we got what you're looking at here is a picture of AIDS again. The, the bones rotting. A starvation taking over the body. Actually rotting while they're walking. And uh, everything, you can see everything pictured is what's happening to this false church. Now remember, brother, sister, every war, pretty almost every war that's going on today is a holy war. Now over there in, in Somalia, they're, they're fighting a, a little bit of political war, but, but remember they're mostly Muslims over there. In Europe, you've got the Muslims against the Christians, and uh, now you've got the terrorists, the Muslims coming over here. Well, I'll make this statement very boldly from the pulpit. I don't care if there's two billion Muslims and only one billion Christians. The Christians will murder the Muslims. They'll knock them out. Because this in the Bible has nothing to do with the Muslims and the Taoists and the Confucius and the Hari Ramas and the Baloney Bunch. It's talking of those that bear the name of the Lord God in vain. 
It's Christian religion. So never forget it. And remember till the very end, communism and democracy exist side by side and there's going to be the constant pull. That's why in America, these idiots here in Congress can't waken up to the fact that, that Russia's destroyed right now because of socialism we're going more and more into it. And yet at the same time, nobody with an ounce of brains doesn't realize that capitalism by itself isn't going to work. You got too many greedy guts in there. They don't care if the fellow next door is starving, long as they get their big ham, bone, and turkey, and they'll watch them starve and have fun watching them. So just lighten up. Now here's what you're looking at. This woman was espoused to a husband. She doesn't get to him, <clears throat> and she's already been seduced and pregnant by somebody else. Now. Watch exactly the words here because Paul is doing, referring to Eve, and Brother Branham is following in the same footsteps the Apostle Paul. For I have espoused you to one husband. See, but he said, I, and I know you're fooling around. How did he know it? The second 20th chapter of Acts, he said, there are people sitting right here among you. They're nothing but wolves in sheep clothing. Yeah. Now, when are we, now, this is a word for me as well as for you. When are we going to smarten up about these nice people? These nice people. Oh, God. Spiritual murderers are not nice people. Amen. Want your souls hung over hell? Be my guest. Yours, not mine. It's mine, not yours. Every man on his own two feet. So here's this fella here coming along, this slick chick, this slick bird, <clears throat> and he's got this, got to this woman. Now, how was it done? For, but I fear, lest by any means. <clears throat> now, he said, I don't know how many different ways this, the devil is going to attack you to get you off the word. That's not the point. There's many ways he can do it. He came to Jesus. If you be the Son of God and I happen to know you're hungry, change these stones into bread. Jesus said, this written man shall not live by bread alone. In other words, the spiritual must come ahead of the physical. Then whatever you do in the physical, if it's, it's spiritually based, it's got to come out right. See? Because there is a physical, there's got to be. <clears throat> so what did Jesus do down the road? The devil wasn't there at all, but there was a wedding. So what does he do? He bypassed the process of turning the grapes into wine, so he just took some water. Instead of putting the water into the earth and into the grapes and then into the process of fermentation, he just Whatever word he spoke in the water was turned into wine. Now, the devil can use every trick in the book to get you off the word, but I fear less by any means, as the serpent beguiled him through his subtlety, his smartness, his shrewdness, his handling of the word of God, and am I, he can deal in science and everything else. He beguiled Eve. <clears throat> That's absolutely got her pregnant, completely fooled her into a place of intercourse, and here she is now stuck out of wedlock and belonging to another man on top of it. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. <clears throat> so what's he telling you? He's telling you there is a womb of the mind. And if you let that get pregnant with anything other than the Word of God, you are an adulterer or a, you're an adulterist. You're an adultery. Now, what you will bring forth will not be the Word of God, period. Now, remember, the Word of God is sown in the human race, and there's a period of gestation. And in seven church ages, there's been the sowing. And need no age outside the last age 
will bring forth that child, that man-child, which we're talking now in terms of Jesus Christ himself bringing forth in flesh before the burning of Sodom. <coughs> so what does, it, what does God do? He has to get a Sarah. And that Sarah is a woman who's completely barren. Her womb is shut up until God opens it. That's how God grants repentance. You can't believe unless God grants you repentance. You can't do it. God has to grant it. So the opening of the womb comes at the end time. And she's pregnant by Abraham, <coughs> to whom was given the original promise. We'll see more of that as time goes on. The main thing is to understand what we are looking at here. See, in the past several discussions on this message, we have seen that as Eve had a choice to receive the Word of God as her ultimate or to receive the change Word of God, which would then be the ultimate. And Satan then would be her mentor, her fashioner, her designer. So did the church under Paul that started out as a virgin of the Word in 2 Corinthians 11. A true virgin is one exactly like the mother of Jesus. Be it unto me according to thy word, or I take your word as truth and life. No questions or conditions or sensations. Just the word. <clears throat> now, let me tell you something. You better believe that that word had better be authoritative and had better be vindicated and Mary certainly must have known vindication, or she never would have said, Be it unto me according to thy word. She'd have said, Listen, slicker. Now, hey, okay, now if you don't think that's right, <clears throat> let's go to the book of Revelation, the second chapter, under the A messenger the, of the church which is in Ephesus. These things said, He that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walks in the midst of seven golden candlesticks. I know your works, your labor, your patience, how you can't bear them which are evil. Now those are the worshipers who worship outside the word like Cain and all the time pretend they're with the word because they can read the Bible, but they can't divide it. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them to be liars. <coughs> Yet this virgin church got food. Now, this, let's understand this now. At the end time, there'll be a virgin church that can't be fooled, that won't be fooled. That she will take the Word of God and stick with it, completely pregnant by that Word, the mind entirely shut up, You won't have a preacher and a guy sitting in the pew that wants to run everybody with his insanity and tell you, well, I know enough now, if this ain't the real thing, I'll know the real thing. That is a lie. Your mind is not shut up. It is still open. Thank you, Brother Pearson. I'm sick and tired of asininity. The constant phone calls I get. I don't mind bearing my cross. It's very easy at this time, except for you aches and pains, because I'll stand with this and die with it. But I'm hated around the world because I built myself a house, and I won't come out to shake hands and say, come in, come in, and bring your crud with you. Not interested. You might be, but I'm not. And I'm going to tell you something. Those that thought they were so clever are going to find themselves starving if they're not starving already. I'm going to tell you, you find one more preacher in the world that takes word for word like I'm doing. You go ahead and find him. <clears throat> and I'll go sit under him, maybe. Just maybe. A true virgin is one exactly like the mother of Jesus. All right? You just can't say, well, she took the word. 
The thing is, why did she take the word? Read the genealogies. She's in it. <clears throat> She's traced all the way back to God himself. Because before there was a male or a female, there had to be a life. And before there's an X or a Y chromosome, there's got to be something to which the X and the Y is attached. Oh, boy. Do you know that Jesus was elect? Peter says, elect. Where is that, First Peter? I don't know if it's First Peter or not. I know it's in Peter. If I don't, I'll run back and get my concordance in a hurry. Because <laughs> I don't know where it is otherwise. What's it? I thought it's in First Peter, the first chapter. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers and scattered abroad, are elect according to the foreknowledge of God and sanctification of the Spirit. You say, well, that just means us. No, it doesn't. There's a, he was elect. <clears throat> Tracy's genealogy. There's a natural election. There's a spiritual. This woman was naturally elect based upon the spiritual. And she took the scripture because it was scriptural that a virgin could bear a child, but nobody understood what it really meant and how it would be. But notice how quickly she assented to the scripture. Well, I'll just stick around and, and see if that scripture comes to pass. And you know, Brother Dale, I've been here a long time now, and my father taught me certain things. Yes, my father did, because he had a calling. He didn't obey it, of course. God didn't clean him up and take him out of this world. He lives 80 years of age or better. And then he took Brother Branham's brother out of this world for not obeying and going to preach. Come on, I'm sitting, listen, you sitting in the pulpit. Are you smart? If you've got an ounce of brains, are you listening to me? Can you understand anything this morning? That what Brother Branham said is, thus saith the Lord, is God himself speaking? Or, hey, where are we? We're thinning out. Yeah. Yeah. Understand this 100%. <clears throat> this woman, elect, didn't say, well, hey, boy, what an in a visitation. And this doesn't work out. I got the key when the real one comes. You're here this morning, you're supposed to be virgin womb Christians. What if a real slick guy could come in here and upset your apple cart? Well, I'll tell you one thing. If I'm elect and I trust I am, he said I was. I'm seen. If I've got a gift of teaching like Brother Branham had a gift of healing, nobody wants it. Or so that could let you all out maybe, but it won't, doesn't really mean that, it sounds like. Just anybody that came here and fooled you people, I've been a complete 100% failure. Except for one thing, you've been a complete 100% non-seed. Somebody this morning took a walk. Would you walk with him or say, I'll stay with the word? Now, look, we're not playing church anymore. We really believe this is the end of the whole thing. I knew that man very, very well. I ate with him, slept with him, slept in his home, in motels. You can do what you want. But I'm going to tell you something. That man had something that nobody else had because he never, ever made a mistake. And there's nobody living who doesn't make mistakes when it comes to prophecy. Unless it's God himself talking through the brass doorknob. Or as he chose, a man. 
<clears throat> what am I trying to tell you? If you haven't got it, I'm telling you plain and simple. You either believe this message when you heard it or you're still sitting here picking your spiritual noses and you still don't know if you really believe or not. Are you here this morning stuck with gum on the seat of your trousers? If you're not, spiritually speaking, I got news for you. You're not born again. You don't believe this message. So, well, Brother Bell, I don't believe it the way you preach it. Well, you come up and prove me wrong. You take this word for word like I'm doing and see where I'm wrong. I'm quoting the womb of the mind, and this is exactly where Brother Branham got it. He didn't get it out of thin air. <clears throat> you can't come as a prophet and deny another prophet, contradict another prophet, or you can't add to him in such a way as to cause a confusion. Let me just tell you a bit about Brother Branham again, and we'll bring you back. I'll read some more. Remember this morning I told you Brother Branham himself did not use Jesus, the name Jehovah, as sanctifier? It's true, he didn't. But you know what he said? There's a further sanctification in the millennium. The man couldn't be wrong if he tried because he's only a brass doorknob. That's all he is, brass doorknob. What's a brass doorknob? It's something entirely inanimate that a hand reaches out, turns, and opens the door. What more do you want? Use a brass doorknob. You say, what about gold? No, it's brass, judgment. I don't think Brother Brandon feel bad if he heard me preach this morning. He just might even be doing it. I wouldn't sell him short. So I take your word as truth and life. No questions or conditions or sensations, just word. She didn't need anything else. If all things are ma made by the word and all things are maintained by the word, are you going to tell me you need something else in the word? She said, I take your word. <clears throat> and the word brought forth a creation of a sperm and an egg. But don't forget, sperm and egg of itself is nothing but dry chemicals unless there's a life. Whose life was it? God's own life. Now, before we read further, we might also note that Brother Branagh spoke of Sarah and Abraham. We note that after 25 years of promise and various contrived means, Sarah still did not bear the son Isaac. It is evident that Abraham believed, but Sarah gave up. And Abraham, like Adam, went along with the gag for a while because he took Hagar. And of course, Sarah pulled a very clever well, you know, that if people are human. Now, this is, this is ridiculous. She said, I'll have the girl bear the baby across my knees, and that'll be a little charade, and I, that'll be my baby. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, brother, you talk about weird and sick. And the church is in the same boat. <clears throat> See, she's bride. Now, let's get this flat. She's the bride, just the same, and she's obligated. She's got to do it. Now, something's got to happen to make that woman turn around and give up her charades and get right back to the word of promise because she of herself can't do it no matter how many other promises are there, how many years of history, how many years of anything. Something's got to happen to her personally. And only then can it take place. See? Abraham was struggling for 25 years. Jesus has been going through seven church ages in 2,000 years. Then in Genesis 19, just before the burning of Sodom, Sarah, who had entered a period of unbelief, was jolted into virgin word faith. 
as God discerned her thoughts, and Brother Branham said, that's the last sign the world sees. That's the sign that wakes the bride up. Oh, Brother Branham, I believe this great healing thing, and I believe that great thing there, and I believe that great thing there. Oh, listen, you don't even know anything. Until you know the word of God that's vindicated. <clears throat> well, let me see. We got time. We ain't going nowhere. Who knows where we're going except in the rapture by the grace of God. And that's going to be grace, I can tell you right there. <clears throat> There's going to be believing. That if we're going to believe here, I'm going to tell you absolutely. It's the 18th and 19th chapter. The 18th, we got to go. This is where the visitation is. This is, this is, this is uh, what the Pentecostals all quote. Hebrews 13, 8. Little Zachary, he said, do you want to hear my verse of Scripture? I said, I sure do. He said, all right, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, the day in prayer. I said, that's it, son. That's the best one there is. That's the one you got her. He said, all right, here we are. The little child should lead them. All right. <clears throat> And it says in the ninth verse, and he, they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, and lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard in the tent door which was behind him. Now, every circumstance conspired against her having that child. She wasn't only stricken, she was well stricken. She wasn't only old, she was very old. She wasn't only tired, she was bone tired. She was dead tired, hardly mopped the floor anymore. And long ago it ceased to be with Sarah <coughs> in the man or women. No more menses, all over. Therefore, she said, ha, ha, ha. She said, I never had a baby when I was able to have a baby. It was just an act of pleasure. So she reduces it to an act of pleasure again, she said. And she says right here, after I'm waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? People get offended, Brother Brandon said, children are only born because of sexual desire. And you're going to tell me different? Oh, God, have pity on anybody sitting here that is so marvelously spiritual. You are a phony. Two-bit phony. It tells you right here. Amen. Now, let's keep reading. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I have a surety? In other words, after all these years, the sure thing, the sure thing, you're going to have a baby. You're going to have a baby. Now, years after, she's all dried up. As Brother Branham said, the, <clears throat> the milk veins are withered, breasts sagging. She's got wrinkles, God knows how many. Maybe no teeth left even. Poor withered up old gal. Oh, the sure promise, the sure promise, the sure promise. I ask you a question. When the real thing was right there to the complete fulfillment, didn't she recognize it then? No. So you sit here this morning and tell what Brother Bear, when the real thing comes out, I'll recognize. You wouldn't recognize God if you met in your porridge. That was said by an old Scotchman. I wouldn't either. I'm keep reading. Listen, hey, we believe the Bible. We don't believe the Bible. I know this is tough. This is bedtime stories. <laughs> One day we'll know the real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why I'm so encouraged to know there's further sanctification in the millennium, because man, do I need it. I've criticized the 
Abraham, I mean, the old Moses, I said, my merciful God. Moses had 40 years to mess around in, and boy, did he mess around. He had 40 years to learn, and boy, did he learn. And he had 40 years to come back and make good. I said, merciful God, in 120 years, I, I'd still be messing around. I'm so happy to know the millennium, I'm going to be messing around. The very thing I've loved and esteemed and wanted and knew could be so right, I'm going to have it. Why? Because it's in my mind. And if there's, it's in my mind, it's out there to answer me. And it's the word of God because the prophet told me. Because they asked him. <clears throat> Shall I have a surety bear a child when I'm old? Oh, <laughs> she said. And God says, is anything too hard for the Lord? If I hadn't brought you this far, Sarah, it would have looked like a, a lead pipe cinch. But he said, now it looks like nothing could ever be. Brother Branham's gone. 57 varieties of understanding this and that. Hatred, everything else in the camp. Deceit, money-making, grabbing. You talk about a mess. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Now, Brother Branham said the last sign, the last sign was discernment. Okay, shall we go to discernment? Yes, we shall. And we shall find it in the book of Hebrews. It'll be in the fourth chapter, the twelfth verse. <clears throat> And he's talking about the rest, which is picturing the millennium. And we're to labor to enter into it. Gird up the loins of our minds. Don't get deceived. Watch your step. Let us labor, therefore, to enter in that rest. <clears throat> Lest any man fall after the ex same example of unbelief. You that are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven. Okay, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of joint and marrow, and discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, and, and, but all things are naked and open under the, under the eyes <clears throat> of him with whom we have to do. Now hold it, when was that ever done? <clears throat> it was never done to the Gentiles. This is just... The Hebrews had it. We never had it. But Brother Brandon said he's obligated to come back in the form of the Holy Spirit, God himself, and do it. And he's done it. And that's the sign right today. You have your last sign. And if you look for something else, let me tell you this. You are not pregnant with the Word of God, so don't talk to me. Now, if you want to meet with a guy in a motel like he did and a preacher from overseas and a preacher sit right there to destroy this church, go ahead, be my guest. Let me tell you this. I'm meeting you before the white throne now. I will see you before the white throne now. And one of us is going to be in trouble, if not all of us. Now, you don't like that, do you, some of you people? There's too Pentecostal yet. You're still sitting on a fence. You ain't got no fence to sit on. Kids been knocked from underneath you. You don't even know it. <clears throat> I'm preaching presence. I'm preaching the judge. I'm preaching time and eternity are blended. I'm preaching the world. The bride has got its last sign. There isn't another one. Oh, how they love the great healing. How they love this and how they love that. <clears throat> but Brother Branham Deserny. Oh, that blew the gifts plumb out of the water. And Brother Brown is standing there discerning, and they say, oh, my God, my God. Why don't you just use the gift of healing? Just use the gift of healing. Just use the gift of healing. Get this discerning stuff out of the way. <laughs> Shows where your mind is. Shows where my mind is. Why don't we all go and commit suicide? You still got to meet him. Death isn't going to stop you meeting him. Death just means one thing. Any chance you might have had to do anything at all with any part of yourself, body, mind, soul, spirit, it's all over. 
Let me read it again. <clears throat> For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrows and is the discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart neither is there any creation or creature not manifest in his sight but all things are naked be and open before and unto the open naked and open <clears throat> unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do when this happens you're stuck and you know you're dealing with God Kentucky hillbilly, yeah, I bet. Bird that believed in one God. He just got all puffed up because he had a great ministry. Yeah, we had thus at the Lord too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> I know. I know. Hey, look, I don't hate, really hate. But then again, I do. Then again, I do. Because I hate that kind of junk. Now you tell me what I'm supposed to do. Now if I'm neutral, I'm still against him. Because you can either so for him or against him. Neutrality is out of the picture. Amen. Now I may be hated because the way I teach, that's part of the game. I don't hate the people, <clears throat> might sound like I do, they pull all these tricks off, but I'm not going to stand back and just let them sit there from now on and not expose it. Because I want to tell you, I would sooner catch them with women in a harem committing adultery than what they're trying to do with the souls of men and women, because one is just a body incidence, and that's where it stops. But the rest goes on and on. <clears throat> Then in Genesis 19, just before the burning of Sodom, Sarah, who had entered a period of unbelief, was jolted into virgin word faith as God discerned her thoughts. Now, this ministry of Brother Branham and this discernment shows you positively that if God can read everybody's mind and Brother Branham stood there and I saw him, and he would take every spirit under control in that building, there could be 5,000 or 500,000, it didn't matter. It wasn't that he read everybody. He didn't need to. But you couldn't hide if you tried, proving now, positively, you are in position to have a virgin mind, and when you receive that word, it's closed up, and you will make it, because you're pregnant. The woman is a passive vessel, and she's got what it takes to bring forth a baby. And so is the bride. She is a passive vessel to receive the word of God. That's why I call it passive or revelatory faith. <clears throat> the gestation is nothing. That automatically goes on because it's the word in her which is God willing and doing of his own good pleasure. So I believe today we have a virgin that has come out of Laodicea by reason of the appearing and the vindication of whom that appearance is. <clears throat> so we're going to start back on page 29. <clears throat> it's about Abraham and Sarah. You're going to have the baby. Well, after 25 years, my goodness me. <clears throat> well, God said so. That's it. That's it. There's your virgin. There she is. Not only to baptism, but anything else. The rest of the word. Every single word. So what? This was both physical and spiritual. And that's to 29 in my reading here. <clears throat> With Eve. First and any time. Now, I've told you and asked you this morning, sisters, to forgive me so I can mention that. Any time that a woman takes the wrong step. I'm talking about Christ and the bride now. But any time a woman takes a wrong step, she has to first receive it in her mind. <clears throat> She's got to think about it or she's raped. Yeah. She's got to think about it. She's got to be proposition <clears throat> or desiring it. She's going by her feelings or what have you, which we're not fussing about. <clears throat> Anytime a woman takes the wrong step and talk about Christ the bride now, 
Woman takes a wrong step, she has to first receive it in her mind. That's right. Some slicker has to persuade her. And she listens to it against her own better judgment. Now, it doesn't say her own carnal desires. She knows better. Then the act is committed. So first, <clears throat> it hit Satan, hit Eve's mind, and in the womb of her mind, she doubted God's word. Then came the actual act. And that's true. That goes for men, men and women both. We're talking in the spiritual. And the only way we can ever be born again is first in the womb of the mind receive the word, and then the Spirit comes on top of that and brings it. There you are. That's what does it. That's the real gospel teaching, brother. I believe if St. Paul was standing today, he'd teach the same thing in this hour. All right? <clears throat> Let's find out if Paul would teach the same thing. We go to Romans, the first chapter. Verse 15 to 17, So as much as it in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Now this gospel he did not receive from man. He was not taught it by man. He got it straight from God himself. For I am not ashamed of the good news, the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation <clears throat> to everyone that believeth, <clears throat> to the Jew first and also to Greek. Now, before you believe it, it says in Romans 10, you got to hear it. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God doesn't come any other way. So there's no, un there's no salvation under heaven granted unto man, <clears throat> but what is the true revealed word of God in whatever measure it takes at that particular time and for that purpose. Can't be otherwise. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. See? <clears throat> All right, he's right on that count. Where do you go next? You go to 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> and the first chapter at verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Now remember, water baptism <clears throat> is a part of the gospel. <clears throat> but there were those who went crazy baptizing. So it didn't matter about the word. And you got the same thing right today in the churches. Oh, get baptized, get baptized, get baptized. <clears throat> and that's it. Well, it isn't it. Water baptism's a part of it. And it's allowed, justified, demanded by the very gospel that's preached. He sent me not to baptize, certainly not, <clears throat> but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it's the power of God. For it's written, I'll destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? <clears throat> Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? You get all these scientists. There's no God. There's no God. And William Branham come on the scene, discern thoughts. Not one word ever fail. And he's going around and say, they're lost. They're uh, see now, the man has a, a psychic power of thumb description. You see, it can be scientifically explained. It's just that, it, well, we'll get it down the road, but there's really nothing to it. <clears throat> that was Walker's vision or dream he had. See, they can't get it. The Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jew and Gentile, both Jew and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. <clears throat> so, all right. Brother Branham is correct in what he says here. Now, also, <clears throat> You must remember that Brother Branham was obligated to preach the Apostle Paul according to 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 and 10. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. 
In other words, the very word of Paul that preached in that hour is preached in this hour. It's the same dynamic, perfect faith, but this time without corruption. Why? Because he's coming to be glorified. There isn't a chance for her to get pregnant. There isn't time for her to get pregnant by somebody else. This is the great mystery of the seventh seal and the seals. They can never be duplicated. Why? Because nobody knew what was on those seven thunders. Nobody knew. And Brother Branham preached it <clears throat> through vindication. It's right on a tape. Let anybody come. The Frisbees, all the Pentecostals come. There's no way. And the Sheelys and all these birds rising up. There's no way that you can change this word and defile a bride. Let them come. <clears throat> Let the Perry Greens write the, 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 the prefaces and send the books around the world. Everybody get happy, happy, happy. Oh, because they were smart to know enough, uh, they saw enough in Brother Branham to know the real thing when it came along. They didn't believe Brother Branham. <clears throat> Set the church in order, had no use for it. All right. What were, what were the results with her, with Eve? Physical and spiritual death. What are the results of those who accept the other words? That's somebody else's, Satan's fooling. It, go, it goes into this frolic today that, that they have, both physical and spiritual death. And Brother Brand just puts it off like a dance of death, you know. <clears throat> both body and spirit shall be annihilated and be no more. That's exactly right. Now, I want you to notice something here, brother, sister, <clears throat> that you are dealing with this period of time under the seventh seal when God and his prophet are here, both of them vindicated the absolute word of God that goes to the bride <clears throat> and distinguishes her from everybody else. It says right here at this time, that both body and spirit shall be annihilated <clears throat> and be no more. That's exactly right. That's why you find in Malachi, the fourth chapter, he refers to the white throne of the fire leaving neither root nor branch. This is exactly the third chapter of Matthew. His fan is in his hand, thoroughly purge his floor, gather wheat in the garden, and burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. <clears throat> you are looking at the judge. The process has started. Listen to me. The process has started, is continuing now, and will go right to the white throne. Do you people understand what I'm saying? Yes. Then why aren't preachers preaching what I'm preaching? Why aren't they preaching the judge? <clears throat> why don't they preach the judge stands at the door is the same one in James 5 that is over there in Revelation 3? Oh, God. They got two different people in two different places and three different trumpets and four different trumpets. God knows what they got. <clears throat> Note, Mary's womb, Mary's womb, the physical mind, see, was virgin womb. Why? It was a believing womb. See, a believing mind is a virgin womb. Now, note Mary's womb. Mary's womb, the physical mind, see, was a virgin womb. Why? She believed God's word. And in believing God's word, what happened? Her mind became a place whereby the life of that word and whatever that word was, and all word is not the same word as to what it is saying and for what time it is saying it. <clears throat> We're talking about the womb to bring forth Christ. In other words, bring him back to earth here. Now look, the baby cannot be without the woman. It takes a woman to have a baby. Now she's got to get pregnant. <clears throat> now, the bride gets taken off the earth in chapter 4 and comes back in chapter 19. And who's she coming with? 
You know who she's coming with. She's bringing forth that son right on earth here. <clears throat> it's going to take a virgin womb, the virgin mind to do it. Now, she believed God's word. That's how she was a virgin. No matter how much anybody criticized, how many things somebody else said, that did not have one thing to do with it. She believed God's word regardless. Now listen, it's the word that came forth under discernment. I'll ask a question. Did Brother Branham discern? Was he the only one that could discern? Thank you. You're getting a little smarter now. I should have the roof raised on that one. You bet your sweet life. When anybody else tries it, it shows that he's false. I got living proof it can be done. But when you come against reality, you lay it down. Like I laid it down and different ones laid it down. I couldn't discern if you paid me. I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't know anything. <clears throat> Brother Branham alone had that gift. See? It's the gift of the judge because it means to judge between. And when you judge between, you rightly divide the word of God. And it can't be done any other way. <clears throat> All right. No matter how much anybody criticized. That didn't have one thing to do with it. She believed God's word regardless. See? Oh, I wish I could just get that over. Are you getting it? See, first it was her mind. Now notice. <clears throat> You just don't receive the Word of God because it's the Word of God. In other words, it's written in this book, and that's the Word of God. <clears throat> We're talking now in the terms of Paul, who said that he was vindicated with the signs and wonders. And Brother Branham was just like Moses, just like Jesus. And Brother Branham did not stand with Jesus. He stood with Moses and with Paul. Jesus stood alone because all the others are only a part of the word. He's the whole and entire word. <clears throat> and he was a savior and everything else included. Now, you'll notice. See, first it was her mind. Now, vindication is not argued. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 36, what came the word of God out from you or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or full of the Holy Ghost, he's spiritual, let him acknowledge the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. <clears throat> Paul stood there and he said, I cannot be judged because I'm vindicated. And because I'm vindicated and cannot be judged, I'm only vindicated and can't be judged because of the word. Vindication does not judge the word, it believes the word. Now that's a tough one, I had to go through that. Brother Branham's sermon just literally scared the spiritual, physical pants off me. I oh, said, well, God, merciful God, if he said this and he meant this thing like I've been taught all along, yeah, I, forget it, I'm go I can blow my brains, I won't do any good, but at least I won't be getting into further mischief. Just go kill myself. Why try? And when I faced it, he wasn't saying that at all. Okay? You've got you to be real in your soul and say, I, I can't help it. He said it. I've got to face it. <clears throat> and you can always walk away if you don't want to face it. But you face it, you're going to find out he's not saying what you think. He says many, many, many times because it's a matter of grace. Vindication cannot be argued with. Now, when you don't argue with vindication, you take the mechanics. <clears throat> and when you take the mechanics, which will attract the dynamics, you step into a paradox. Go over his sermon on paradox again. So, my God, my God, where am I at? Where am I at? Where are you at? Shut up and listen. If you can't ask someone with a hat pin to jab you, to jar you, 
Just listen. And let your own thinking go. Just listen. Has anybody here this morning actually seen a chemical engineer do genetic splicing? Nobody? I'm sure you haven't. Well, supposing I was here doing it, wouldn't you just let your mind go blank to get everything I was trying to get you? Wouldn't you let your own thinking go? Because you don't know anything about the subject anyway. Then if this woman at the end time is a whore, wretched, miserable, naked, blind, and hasn't got enough on the ball to know it, saying, oh, I'm increased in goods, and I don't lack a thing. Look at my clothes and all. I am no widow. I sit as a queen. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You know, you people better get with my wife. She'll tell you a few things. She used to work in a little insane institution. Well, we also, they weren't insane. They were born that way. And this one girl, she knew that she was engaged to the Prince of Wales. Oh, sure. Absolutely. She was, too. When she found out about Wally Simpson, the American, she was destitute. What I'm trying to tell you is you can be so thoroughly deceived. Wretched, miserable, naked, blind. Say, I am not naked. I am not blind. I'm rich. I'm increased in goods. I don't lack one thing. Hallelujah. I am the virtuous wife of Almighty God. Don't you say I'm a harlot. Don't you say I'm divorced. And don't you say I'm a widow. I'm sitting as a queen. Hallelujah. And millions now living will never die. Right there you cut your throat, you filthy swine, using the word of God. Millions will not live. Eight people made the ark. Now, if you can't understand why people don't like my preaching, I'll tell you, I don't like it either. <coughs> but I say, I'm rich in Christian goods, and those lovely people are going to make it. God didn't say that. Boggles your mind. Kind old priest. Nicer than Jesus. That renegade bird. You know, Brother Branham was so marvelous in these dissertations. So just marvelous, just marvelous. I wish I could just get that over. Are you getting it? See, first it was her mind. Before the act had ever taken place in her literal womb, the act had to take place in here first to let the spirit come in to do the rest of the work. Oh, before there can be a spiritual birth take place, the word has to find itself through the mind, and the mind believe it. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath e eternal life. <clears throat> now listen, Paul the apostle preached the same thing. He said, casting down reasons and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's what he said. He said, just confess what I say and don't say anything else. And remember, the mind is a part of the spirit. It's not brain now, although the brain receives it and imprints it, but it's that life and that spirit that can bring it out of there. It's like the, the, the imprinted board that you've got in your computer. Any place else you've got a printed board in there. And those chips, if you don't have a battery or electricity, you ain't going to get anywhere with your, with your whole setup. It's dead. And let me tell you, you get too big a charge of electricity, it'll blow the circuits. That's what sex did. That's why they got AIDS. Come on, come on, people this morning, get down to the Bible with me and begin to believe it. What have you got to lose? Your souls. That's what you got to lose. If you don't believe it, it's gone. <clears throat> Listen, he that heareth my words and believeth on him that has sent me hath eternal life and shall never come into the judgment. Now he puts in brackets or through the tribulation period. But has passed from death unto life. Brother Branham is giving this scripture a meaning that nobody else has ever given it. Oh, Kentucky hillbilly. Yeah, that's a pretty clever picture. Yeah, somebody put it with an airbrush maybe. 
Yeah, you know, he, uh, he got carried away with that great ministry, you know. Yeah, I got too big for his britches. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, come on, you tell me they're not saying that? Even the people that say, well, I want to tell you what, if they ain't the real thing, I'll know it. Are you stupid this morning or are you understanding what a battle is? To battle in this pulpit to try to tell you the truth. Oh, yeah. Mean, lousy veil to stand up. Don Shears a veil man because he didn't listen to Laura pumping full of crap. What does Laura know, a woman? Well, come on. Amen. I'll bring the names out. I'm not afraid of you. You're afraid of me? I'm not afraid. Hey, we can dissolve the church tomorrow morning. I'll still stand for God. Somehow, some way. And I don't mean it half as I should mean it. I don't know it half as I should know it. It's not as half as real as it should be. But I'm waiting. Because God's word can't fail. <clears throat> Let's go back and find what this little hillbilly talking over here in the book of John. You always go to the, the he liked the fifth chapter of John. You can go five or you can go many other verses. <clears throat> You know, Jesus is vindicating himself that's God doing the whole thing. And he says in John 5, 19, Verily, I said to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but he that see what he sees the Father doing. For what things ever he doeth, those things also doeth the Son likewise. And turns right around in John 14 and 12 and says, greater, The greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. In other words, God is going to come down here sometime after Jesus is up there on the mercy seat. <clears throat> the intercessor the inter and, the, and the mediator, and there's going to be a fella down here with a greater ministry. Oh, I, I just can't believe that. No, no, no. You see, Brother Bill, what it means? He's spread around the world. I say, well, in Baptist, brother, how come you're not getting some healings? <laughs> what happened to you? A few Pentecostals? They don't amount to hill of beans for what they're getting. What's going on here? <clears throat> you see, now listen. He goes on, he said, For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth, showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. Hey, hold it. Nothing greater happened. No. Nothing greater happened. He had to wait for it. And now they've happened. The epiphany. Vindication, the virgin mind. Live, die, sink, or swim, drop dead. Don't try to get in the way in this word. I may not believe it right, but I believe it. Get out of my way. You say, well, you, 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 Oh, come on, for God's sake, if you got the regal, the next thing's got to be a counterfeit. What do you want? You know, if I'm going to tell you people something, nobody has a sane mind except the bride. Everybody else is insane. Every, look at your government. Look at your government. Like father, like son. <clears throat> and he said he's going to show him greater things. So who came down? And what did he do? With the lamb on the father's throne. Now for as the father raises the dead and quickens them, even so the son quickens whom he will. And the father judges no man, but he committed all judgment unto the son, that all men may honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honored the son honors not the father, so on. And right, he goes on right down here. And all the way through, and Brother Branham categorically puts this one in here, <clears throat> shall not come into the judgment. There's no way that he will do it. Verily I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth in him who sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into the judgment, but is passed from death unto light. And he tells you right there that this is that period of the voice, uh, the shout, and the voice, and the trumpet. <clears throat> the church being put in order. And he said, this group of people are not going to be thrown into the great tribulation. Now listen, there's a promise that the church is going to be thrown into the tribulation. 
right? Second chapter of Revelation. Go on, let's look at it. Or is it the third chapter? Well, it doesn't matter. Second or third, we'll find it. Can't be too far out. <clears throat> All right. It's the second chapter. And behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into a great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. All right, now listen to me. The children, I'll kill her children with death. And notice, I am he that searches the reins in the hearts. There's Hebrews 4 and 12 again. This is your great tribulation. This is what Brother Branham is speaking about. <clears throat> and he said, as a spiritual death, a second death at this time where body and soul are annihilated. And he's talking about these people. Now remember, the foolish virgin does not get annihilated. She dies and she comes up with these people, but she's allowed to come in on the outer perimeter with the kings and all the great ones and bring their glory into the bride. Now, Brother Branham is giving us the true meaning of this. <clears throat> He's not just preaching a sermon. He's giving us absolutely, thus saith the Lord, factual revelation from God. So, all right, this is 2 Thessalonians 1 and 10, the judge exonerating us. <clears throat> this is Revelation chapter 18. How many minutes we got? Good. Revelation chapter 18. Now, notice what it says. After these things, I saw another angel, a messenger come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud, strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, fallen become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean, hateful bird. Now, God himself came down through the prophet and declared it. You don't have to wonder anymore. The city upon the, 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 the six hills. Who is the harlot? Who are the daughters? By vindication, he told you <clears throat> and explained it. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, come out of her. What voice? The same voice with the shout, the voice and the trumpet. Come out of her, my people, and don't be partakers in, for her sins are reached unto heaven. <clears throat> reward her, even as she rewarded you. Now go on down the line and read the whole thing, and you will find that judgment has been pronounced. <clears throat> then what are you waiting for? The execution of the sentence, which cannot take place until certain other events take place. But they're in process. Time and eternity have blended. I wish I could read it all. I don't have time. Read it for yourself. <clears throat> but however, let's go to Revelation, the 11th chapter. This, this is now remember. Brother Branham said the seventh trumpet <clears throat> in Revelation is the same as the seventh seal to us. Now, the, verse 15. The seventh angel sound, there was great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Who do you think came down to take over? Amen. To put everything under the feet of Jesus. <clears throat> when did he do it? What is going on? Are you still looking to the future? So you'll know when the real thing comes along. Yes, I'm going to keep driving it in. Oh, yeah, go and tell them who gives it if it's on tape. Go on. You open your mouth, I'll put my foot in it. Two feet in one mouth, pretty bad situation. Come on, go ahead. <clears throat> go in. It's got to come out anyway. <clears throat> the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Who's taking over right now? Who's putting the church in order? Who gave the clues by the shout, <clears throat> which is bringing everything in divine order and subjection? You got to get right back to the Garden of Eden where you go to the Tree of Life. Now watch the four and twenty elders that sat before God in their seats fell down, fell upon their faces, worship God, saying, "We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty." 
which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken unto thee thy great power and has reigned, and the nations are angry. Well, you say, that isn't a garbled bunch of hogwash. I never heard any. Everybody knows that nothing much is going on, if anything, and now it says you've already taken your power and the reigning is going on and yet there's nothing being done that's down the road. That's where you're wrong. Time and eternity have blended. He is here and he's taking over. Amen. Judgment's in the land. Oh, God, don't you understand, Brother Brown said, always looking back, always looking back, always looking forward, always looking forward. Why don't you look now? Well, Brother Vail, I can read. Well, great, I know you can read. You're wonderful. You can all say, da, da, and goo, goo, when you're a tiny baby. Yes, I know. You're an Einstein spiritually. Fat. Read your Bibles. <clears throat> See, but don't read it with your own thinking. Read what he said here. Or through the tribulation period. He interpreted it. That's a, that's a Kentucky hillbilly. He got carried away because he had such a great ministry. Well, what kind of a God do you serve would give a jackass a great ministry and back him up and then not mean it? I couldn't respect a God like that. He cut my throat every five minutes of the day. I'd sooner believe in mythology. You understand what I'm trying to get across to you? Somebody's playing fast and loose, my brother, my sister. Never said I was a nice preacher. The nation's angry, thy wrath has come, the time of the dead, that they should be judged. Thou should give rewards to thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, and small and great, and should destroy them that destroy the earth. So this is the first, the second half of the first resurrection. This is not at the end of the great tribulation. And notice the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquake and great hail. And it tells you right there the judgment of the great tribulation has already set. <coughs> And Brother Branna said, when you see this happen right here, you know that you're in for it. This is it. Well, well just a minute now, if that's the case, you see, Brother Bale, yeah, Brother Branna's been dead now, what is it, 28 years? And you see, 28 years, that blows the whole thing. You've got to be nuts. Noah was building the ark 120 years. Who told you to set a time? Who made you a judge? And talk about a virgin mind? Ha, uh, ha, uh, ha. Uh. Whoring mind is the word. Whoring mind. You know who the whore is? She sells her body for money. The very temple holy unto God to give life. She's the goddess of pleasure. An Aphrodite. Talk about filth. That's the church. <clears throat> That's the church. Revelation 22 and 14, look at it. The seals are open in Revelation 10. And in 14, blessed are they that wash their robes, not do his commandments, wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and enter in through the gates into the city. Now watch. Enter in through the gates. What are the gates? There you are. Plural. Series. You know the gate I'm looking for right now? Is immortality. And I've already got the gate of the living word of God, the vindicated word. I passed that gate by the grace of God. The next thing in the millennium, I'm into the other gate. And past the white throne. It's at this time, my brother, my sister, you have begun the opening of the gate. Time and eternity have mingled. Go right to the tree of life. <clears throat> assured. This bride is assured that she is a part of the new Jerusalem. Get that flat. We're only the first stage, and they could be deceived. 
had a true hope built upon a knowledge that they knew that they knew that they knew only this bride supersedes. Now, how settled down are you? We lost a lot, and one guy said, no preacher going to tell my family how to dress. And he talked to you real blunt sometime. Get rid of your kids and come and stand with me sometime. And I'll tell you what's in the books that you haven't read. And I'll tell you things you've been married for years, and maybe you know, but I doubt you do know. And I'll tell you why I say them. And I can show you when it has a slit in her skirt, has a filthy, whorish spirit on her. Why don't you put a box pleat in it? No, I can't do that. And the husband stand right here. Where's the husband? You tell me you love your wife? You love the Word of God? You're liars, just sitting there liars. Don't talk to me about it. I got you cold dead. Cause I, don't, I just don't talk up here. I back my everything up, I'll back. And you may laugh, but I got my original knowledge of this from a Catholic priest. The best there is in the whole game. Church has got the spirit of a whore on it. <clears throat> She's living in pleasure. And her pleasure is a perverted word. And she loves to open her mind to it, everything coming along. And that's latter rain Pentecost. That's the closest and that's the filthiest. Oh my, notice now, virgin womb, her mind, virgin mind to believe God's word. Live, die, sink, or swim. All right, you say, now look here. Oh, say, Brother Branham, it couldn't be that way. It's impossible. John Wesley would have seen it. So-and-so would have seen it. How can you see what it isn't time for? How can you see the apples on the tree even though you know it is an apple tree when it's dead winter? But you know the apples are coming. And in the spring you see the leaves. That's an apple leaf. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And you see the blossom. And the apple blossoms are beautiful. You say, oh, yes, yes, yes. But if I'm going to have a real good bunch of fruit, I've got to pull some of them off or they'll drop off on their own because real good fruit doesn't abide in great big... You know, only, only in the, the grapes of Eskel where two men couldn't even lift up one bunch of grapes. That's a different story. But you got even the Garden of Eden was supposed to be pruned. I know it's an apple tree because I see the apples. It's only a matter of time now till the ones fall off that shouldn't be there and the others stay there. The sun and the rain bring a deed and there's harvest time. Simple as ABC. It wasn't time. Brother Branham meant it. He said the, the, the planting, a little sprout came up, a little shoot. <clears throat> a little tiny bit under, under Luther, a little more under Wesley, then Pentecost. There stood the chap. And the chaff didn't know that it wasn't the wheat. But the light had to be manifest. That life, listen, that life in this hair, this was manifested. Amen. God himself came down. Not only manifest himself in signs and wonders, as Brother Branham said, but he showed himself in a pillar of fire upon Mount Sinai, and so today we have his picture. Oh, yeah, I said, oh, that's too much for me. Well, it ain't too much for me. I'm going to tell you something. I've got to be honest with you. It's really too much for me in this respect that my mind is a mixed-up mind like yours. And it's not enough in this respect that I hate to think one man would have it in the sense that we couldn't just keep having more and more. It'd be, you know, but the thing is, we don't need it. Because when it's vindicated, it's vindicated and it's all over. Now, that's the hard thing to accept. And that's where the Branhamites are all mixed up. They can't accept what Brother Branham said. You have everything under those seven seals to put you in the rapture. Then what more are you looking for? What more are you looking for? The answer is your mind is full of something or other. <clears throat> now, what's the hope? Stay with every ounce of your energy, keep saying it, keep talking it, and guard your thoughts in your minds and your hearts and stay with it until one day it ripens. And it comes forth like the lion it is. 
Let me assure you, brother, sister, baby lions can be dangerous, but they're really only little pussycats until they get big. And they're, they're very, very dangerous. The word in our heart may be like a pussycat right now, just purring. And I mean, one day it's going to roar, brother, sister. One day it's going to roar. The lion of the tribe of Judah. <clears throat> Don't fool with God's word. Notice now, virgin womb, virgin mind, to believe God's word. You see, well, look here, okay, brother, and so on. Wesley would have had, no, it wasn't time. Sure, the devil could have said the same thing to Mary. Who are you? Why, you're the poorest of the city. You ain't nothing but a, a young 16-year-old or 18-year-old down here packing water out of this pump. Boy. Your dad did, your mother, an old blind woman down there now. How in the world will you ever? See, he said Anne was her mother, you know, the prophetess. We're, we're told. How in the world are you going to have a thing to do with that? Listen, my old mother is a blind woman, but she's a godly woman. Through her lips she planted a seed in my heart. I read it out of God's word myself in Isaiah 9 and 6, a virgin shall conceive. Now, what's he telling you here? Listen, if you are a true seed of God, you will recognize the word of God when it comes to you. <clears throat> You'll recognize it. See, she recognized the scripture even as we recognize the vindication pointing us to the word and say that's it because remember she had vindication hallelujah can, can you see the word takes flesh there you are god's going to have a church it's going to be born of the word of god because it is the living word of god do you see it in other words brother Branna said the day's coming when you, the day is here when you receive the word of God in your flesh, you become the word of God. And he said, the flesh is becoming word and the word is becoming flesh. <clears throat> and this is the answer to Revelation 3, 14. Wretched, miserable, naked, blind, and don't know it. And he said, I've only got one thing to tell you. Repent, change your mind. Now, how are you going to change your mind? He said, I'm standing at the door. Come on out here and I'll change it for you. How? Vindication. Brother, sister, we better know the man outside. We better know the one outside is God. We better know that. Just like John, he heard a voice and he turned to see the voice. And Brother Branham said that means to turn to see was scriptural. <clears throat> now, once you get the sign of the prophet, it's all over. You are either going to be elect, absolutely, wise virgin, or you're finished. From that point on, I cannot judge if you are foolish virgin <clears throat> and will make it eventually, or whether you're a straight unbeliever or just a make-believer. And I, we've sure had our dose of something being made around here. I just don't understand it all. But I know one thing. I don't care what anybody does or any preacher in this pulpit or any place else. I am not going to leave what I believe in this word, what I preach word for word by Brother Branham here. He said, can you see the word takes flesh? In other words, the word took right to her flesh. It was instilled right into her. Just like that sperm and the egg created began multiplying in her, her body, to bring it forth. There you, there you are. God's going to have a church. Brother Branham said the word is, is being in virgin wombs right now. He's going to have that church. It's going to be born of the word of God because it is the living word of God. Do you see it? In other words, the word is coming to the word. We're a little part. <clears throat> that word comes, the life strikes it and we become that fulfillment. <clears throat> now, many people don't understand that, but let's put it this way. That's the way it's been through seven church ages. That's all. Only we don't have to die. This church will be standing here as no other church ever did from the time of the Garden of Eden. There is going to be a bride, a very, very tiny number, as it was in the days of Noah, seven or eight people. Who knows? It's going to be more than that, I'm sure. <clears throat> but they're going to be right here. <clears throat> okay, that's as far as we can go today. We know I know our time is gone. Spoken word is original seed. Brother, sister, if we don't get back to what Paul preached and understand how it was given, to take it how it was given and to make it ours, we're never going to make it. That's the whole secret. 
That word's going to be fulfilled, as Brother Branham said. If we're not bright, there's a bride out there somewhere, and by the grace of God, we'll not stand. I've done some tough preaching. I do to warn you because I see what's been going on and on and on behind my back and every place else. When I stand before God in that great day, I don't intend to be guilty of anybody's blood in this church right here. As far as I know what the Word of God says, I lay it all out before you. Uncover every single thing. Talk about my own heart condition. God knows it anyway. We are before the white throne. Because, brother, sister, he is the white throne because he is the judge and he is here. Don't let that escape your attention. Let's rise and be dismissed. Heavenly Father, again, we want to thank you for your kindness to us, this kindness, Lord, that allows us to come together to study the word of the prophet, to take our time to realize how this thing was in the beginning and how it's got to come back. Everything tight. Brother Branham right with the Apostle Paul. Paul vindicated. William Branham vindicated. The very words that Jesus said that, that seemed to be so far-fetched in the light of who he was. This is that son. This is that one in whom was the fullness of the Godhead dwelling. This was that one who said, God in me. And he that seen me has seen the Father. Then turn around and say, and show me greater works yet. Talking about those very things were manifested. I don't believe, Lord, that meant raising from the dead. I believe it's just exactly what John 14 and 12 said. And believe, Lord, it's today. Father, we know it's today. We know these things have happened. We, it's been vindicated. How can we not take vindication? How can we not see when the sun rises? Hey, the sun's risen. When the sun set, the sun is set. When the tide's in, the tide's in. When the tide's out, the tide's out. When spring comes, spring's come. Spring's gone, spring's gone. We're three years old, turn four, we're no more three, we're four. <coughs> Help us to be that simple. Help us, Lord, this morning to be that simple and not get lost in verbosity, not get lost in anything, Lord, but the life of the Word, just believing it, trusting, implicitly standing 100% with it. Not trying to change it, not necessarily trying to explain it as though it needed something done to it that would help it. Thinking only in terms, Lord, of explanation and exploration on the grounds of it becoming more wonderful to us, clearer, more dynamic, more part of us, more consolidated more of knowing in that day we're one with you and you with us and we're all together. That's what we're looking at, Lord. Maybe even just pitifully crying out in our souls, Lord, the more we preach and talk about it, somehow it's going to get a hold of us more and more and more until just suddenly that's the living word finally coming through these vessels of clay Hopefully, finally, you're being glorified in us. Hopefully, finally, the deep calling to the deep and the complete satisfaction face to face and knowing as we're knowing in whatever sense that could really mean and the satisfaction of our heart, Lord, leaping, rising up, blessing thy name and praising thee all the day long from the depths of the truth of revelation. This is what we're looking at, Lord, a real bride, a real groom, reality. If we believe it grows, Lord, we're trusting it does. So day by day, the evening dew, morning rains, bright sun. In your presence, Lord, until we come forth with the beloved ones that have gone beyond, we all rise to meet you in the air at the great wedding supper. May not one of us miss it. Grant, Lord, each one look forward. And may nothing supersede what we've looked at this morning, O oh God, no way, shape, and form to be carried away by what others are doing and get so lost looking at what they're doing. We could even forget, Lord, what you're doing in and through us if we only give you the chance. So we're asking for divine guidance today, Lord. We're asking to put us in the tube, Lord, to build that hedge around us like Job. And 
find us, Lord, where we couldn't get out and we don't want to get out and where the enemy can't get in even though he wants to. And there we are, Lord, under the shadow of the Almighty, the refuge of the rock. The psalmist wanted it. We believe every prophet spoke of it. And here today, Lord, somehow there's going to be somebody seeing it fulfilled. And I trust, Lord, it's every single one here this morning, the divine presence. Now, Lord, as the prophet said, if we confess <clears throat> and we witness, Lord, to your word concerning ourselves, even our bodies, you will literally cause and make our bodies to obey that testimony of their word. So here we are today, Lord. There's so much here in this land that we can apprehend, and so much that is ours, O oh God, may we become the busiest people in all the world, meditating upon your word and laboring labors of faith to enter in, to miss nothing, but in all things gain everything which is ours in Christ. This is what we desire, Lord. You've heard our prayer. And uh, without you, Lord, it isn't going to happen. And we're asking you this morning that it's there according to your word, it will happen. Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be all power, honor, and glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Take the name of Jesus with you.